Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today we have an awesome episode where we are going to be checking out the Live to Air Extreme Air Spock 342. Uh, this is a very high performance aircraft, and I've been given the opportunity to do a review of it. So stick around because this one hopefully will be a lot of fun. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, my friends. So again, this aircraft just released yesterday on the sim market. You can see it's a 1655 euros. Um, now, uh, it has a very, very good uh, YouTube trailer for it. I actually really appreciate the video that was done here for this aircraft. Um, but today we're going to get more into depth of the aircraft and how it flies. We're going to be flying it for the first time here on the channel, live on the recording here, uh, meaning that I have not flown the aircraft as of yet. Um, everything is going to be raw and first impressions only. I hate using the word reviews. I really got to get out of that topic. Uh, but the first impressions of the aircraft, you guys are going to catch firsthand. Now, again, this is a very high performing aircraft. We're expecting some really good banks out of it, some high performance climbs. We got smoke. We're going to be doing some uh, some replays using Sky Dolly. Uh, so you guys are going to be able to see the aircraft from just about every perspective I can offer from it. And then, of course, you guys get to see the wonderful excitement, as always, of watching me land a tail dragger. I know that's always a terrifying thought. I am already uh, preparing myself for a nice big bang at the end, but we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll get lucky today. So without any further delay let's go ahead and move on to the simulator and check it out okay so and just a reminder guys all of the links that are necessary to uh, grab this aircraft will obviously be down in the description below um you can pick it up from the sim market itself or you can use the app if you have that installed on your desktop as well it can be found there now the aircraft from the exterior looks absolutely wonderful. I think the textures look really, really cool. It definitely has that high performance look to it. Very similar to me as, as many of the aircraft I'm sure of this class are, but reminds me of that GBR3 uh, from Got Friends. But I love all of the detail that has been put into the exterior. It just looks fast. It looks mean, it looks quick. Um, I love the uh, large bubble canopy there that we have offering that real wide field of view. Um, it's just, yeah. I'm really impressed with the uh, with the with the textures. They definitely meet up to the expectations that we would have for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So definitely don't have any concerns there. Um, I'm not seeing any gaps to the texturing, any weird pixelization on the edge of the surfaces. Um, everything looks nice and smooth, right and tight. So uh, no qualms there. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the cockpit. Stepping into the business end of the aircraft again, it looks very, very nice. Now you can see some uh, texturing here that uh, sort of has a flat look to it in almost, um, meaning that, for example, it's sort of hard to determine where some of the, the services end and begin. But all in all, I love this nice carbon fiber look. It looks like carbon fiber, either that or a nice, really cool uh, fabric on top of everything, which I guess it could be. It's either fabric or carbon fiber. I think that looks like fabric there. Um, but I really love the display layout, the uh, customization here, or that was drawn on the uh, pedals. I love that. You know, there's, again, you get that real high performance look, that sort of sports car brake pedal kind of look. Reminds me of sort of the brake, pal brake pedals I have in my Challenger. It's kind of cool. Um, but uh, again, no major defects. I mean, I had to get nitpicky to find that one there. Uh, the seats all look good. Again, certain spots where you can see the... Uh, the, sh the depth sort of gets lost in it, but all in all, I mean, I'm having to be pretty nitpicky in order to find something quote unquote wrong with it. Um, as far as the texturing goes, I think it's right on par. Um, I love all the detail work that's been put into the canopy. You can see sort of the, uh, it almost looks like a washout effect that's been happening to the canopy. Like the canopy has been used and abused for a while. You can see, yeah, you see, watch the bubbling almost that you can see in the real hazy look. Now I don't know, I guess that part is actually sort of a downer to me um, because I can't understand why you would want that kind of uh, resolution loss or visibility loss in an aircraft like this. So that part's a little concerning. Uh, maybe something that needs to be addressed. I mean, like 
you can i could see this being a very dangerous thing I mean, you can't even read the taxi signs from here um so that is to me that that's a downside of it um i think the canopy needs to be cleaned up uh and cleared out to where you still maintain good visibility because i just i can't see why you would want to fly um in an aircraft uh where objects are this difficult to see especially an object that's high performing uh so that is a point of of uh concern for me and maybe a, a point of questioning for the developer um, but other than that, let's go ahead and see what it takes to, uh, to get this thing up and rolling. Now, much like many of the other aircraft that we've seen lately, we do have a very cool, uh, fly pad here. Um, let's see here. Oh, whoa. How did, How did I do that? Does it tip? It, it tipped back. Can you tip it back down? Well, I mean, it's kind of cool that it did that. All right, well, whatever. All right, so now we're gonna start taking a look at some of the uh, features in the fly pad here. I mean, it must have known exactly what we needed. So first, ground equipment. Uh, let's see here, what do we got? Car, chocks, fuel truck, static objects, interior lights. Oh, it just turns light. You can sort of see it there on the, on the gauge light, I see. You can set your different states. Battery, let's see what it looks like for the outside. Whoa, okay. Kind of digging the car there. All right. Mercedes. Ooh. I wonder how many people I just triggered by saying that. Um, oh, it's missing everything inside. <laughs> but still, that's still kind of cool. Awesome. So it's got a dedicated fuel truck. And by the way, this is an air racer too. So uh, the Reno air race part uh, kit would be really, really handy here. Look at all the static objects. You got your intake covers, prop tip covers. That's pretty awesome. The wheel chocks down there, your pedo covers. Pretty awesome. I like the fuel truck design. Looks very, very good. A lot of detail put into just about everything and the car just adds a little bit of extra oomph to the scene here. That's kind of cool. All right, let's go ahead and pull all those away. That's kind of neat. All right, let's come back and see what we get next. Weights and balances here. So refuel truck. Okay, so you would need the truck to do your refuel. Uh, we're gonna leave it as is. Left tank, acro tank, right tank. Let's see here what we got here. Current payload. We know, the, we know that we're gonna be here. So you need the pilot. Acrobatic mode. Acrobatic mode will empty your wing tanks for acrobatic flight. Acrobatic flight. This airplane is certified as an acrobatic category and capable of unlimited acrobatics. Uh, the wing tanks and the baggage compartment must be empty for all acrobatic flights. Well, we definitely want acrobatic mode because we want to see what this thing can do. Okay, so let's leave that as is. Let's go to the weather. Oh, I see. It just gives you... Ah, okay, I see. All right, so you would type in your ICAO. I got gotcha. you. All right, all right, cool. That's pretty awesome. Checklist. Uh, oh. Oh, this is all snazzy. Taxi. Oh, that's taxi and takeoff, huh? Interesting. After takeoff. Acrobatic. RPM maximum 2700. Tell the RPM maximum 2670. Manifold pressure as required, of course. Normal climb, 140 knots. Best rate of climb, 90 knots. Best angle of climb, 78 knots. All right. In flight. Let's see what we got here. RPM max, 2,500 RPM. Manifold pressure again, of course, as required. Set mixture according to exhaust temperature. Adjust. Gotcha. All right. Fair enough. Suck left for wing tanks every 30 minutes. Rotation, 30 minutes. That's pretty cool. Landing. Let's say we got here for landing or for the descent. Mixture push to full rich. Sort of walking through what we got here. RPM 2000 minimum. RPM minimum. All right. That's good to know. All right. Airspeed as required, obviously. Yep. Yep. Okay. So pretty simple. Doesn't look like we have flaps to worry about on this aircraft. Uh, go around in normal procedures. Approach speed of 80 knots. We'll remember that. Three point attitude. Gotcha. All right. So we want uh, a three point landing. Landing in a crosswind. <laughs> Gosh, I have enough trouble with these darn aircraft. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Huh, all right. Throttle full open, electrical fuel pump off, to landing and shut down, throttle to idle, avionics switch, mixture pull cut off, ignition cut off, master switch off. All right. This is about as simple of an aircraft as you can get, isn't it? All right. And then let's see what else we got next. GPS. Well, how about that? What does this do? Oh, brightness. I was hoping it had like a dark mode, but that's all right. 
Uh, can you not? All right. How do you zoom? Oh, wow. That's small. Did I, did I go too far? Or is it loading? Okay, it's loading. Just takes a second. All right, fair enough. That's going to be also, that's that's very much so going to be based on your internet connection, any other processes you got going on. So there's a lot of things that can impact that. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Current coordinates of the aircraft. This is going to be, I'm guessing, altitude and current angle. Interesting. So you can set your altitude. And I'm guessing we this would be vertical speed. That's interesting. I'd have to check that. Or that's airspeed. That's going to be airspeed. That's probably going to be altitude. I, I don't know what it wants here yet we'll mess around with that in a minute maybe we'll check that out before we get uh, airborne here center on map oh, i don't even see our aircraft hmm interesting we'll have to check this out once we're airborne again uh and let's see what we got here notes it's a little notepad oh it's like a paint so if I wanted to write current barometer to, okay. So I would recommend that's the, the dotting isn't going to be okay. People are going to be using it to write. I think we need to make sure that uh, it doesn't do the dots. Cause that could be a little hard to see after a minute. Um, so I think that should be adjusted. Cause I mean, if you do that, it works fine. But if you wanted to write like, you know, if you're trying to write quick or quickly, that's not going to work very well. So that might be something that can just easily be adjusted. And then flappy plane is included. I love that people are starting to do that more and more. And then you get a, an information looks like about the aircraft. All right. Well, far out. Let's go ahead and get the head tracker turned on. And I think we're going to get this aircraft airborne and get out of here. All right. So we got the head tracker going. Let's see what we got to do here. So let's do checklist. Uh, ground. Okay, uh, fuel selector to acro tank. Acro tank. Uh, avionics master switch off, master switch on. Avionics master switch. Avionics is off, master is on. Uh, propeller control pushed. Mixture full rich. Uh, throttle full open. Electric fuel pump on for three seconds. Okay. Uh, throttle idle. Three millimeters open. It's so about half an inch. Uh, elevator pull and brakes apply. Well, I don't have my magneto switch max. So I'm just sitting here in this propeller free and clear. Starter engage. I'm not going to be able to hold that and click the starter. So we're just going to let it rip. Oh crap, mixture was supposed to be a cutoff. Oh wow. And then we were supposed to feed in. Oops. My bad. I totally did that backwards. I don't know where I read that wrong. Oh, I think I just read right past is what I did. Oops. Well, my bad. Uh, and then adjust for a thousand RPMs. Where's my RPM gauge? Uh, wait a minute. Did I miss something here? Why engage and it starts. Starter engage. Thousand RPMs with the throttle. I don't have a tachometer available to me without the avionics master on so let's do that unless I'm missing it am I missing attack altitude no there's the attack all right let's pull the throttle back all right we're right about a thousand there we go that's close enough okay let's see what we got that's all right let's keep moving my first time flying it we won't hold it against me all right, so it looks like that's about it. We're just monitoring temperatures now. There's our oil temperature, and we're just we've got cylinder head temp, exhaust temperature. Not too bad. Cylinder head high temperature. Let's set our barometric pressure. What do we got there? ACL. Is that any collision? I think that's any collision. I hope that is. Got smoke master switch down there. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's it for all I need. Go taxi. 
Brakes release, elevator pulled. We already went through most of this. Okay. Let's uh see what we got going on here. Ooh. Okay. All right. She uh Yeah, that that canopy behavior I think should absolutely be adjusted. It's very, very hard to see out of that. All right, let's see here. Um, I'm going to do a little back taxi here. Probably should have taxied <laughs> down the taxiway, but that's all right. Yeah, I don't like the canopy effect. That part's that part's very odd. Now, I don't know if that's realistic or not. I just don't know enough about these uh, aircraft. I've never seen that kind of abuse on the canopy, so I have no idea how legitimate that is. I could be way off base, and that could be absolutely correct, so I, I just don't know. But at the very least, if that is legitimate, I would say make it an option. I think it should be an option. It's very hard to see. Like I can barely see uh, the taxi lights as we're passing them. Just, I don't know. It's not that I can barely see it. That's dramatic. Disregard that. It's not that I can barely see it. It's just a very weird effect. Let's just put it that way. Let's just leave it at that. Other than that, I'm really digging the sounds. The taxi performance is just fine. The rudder is very sensitive. Alright, let's slow it down. Whoa. Easy, 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 easy. That was. Man, you can tell it's very sensitive. This takeoff's gonna be interesting. Okay. Easy, darn it. Alright, here we go. We're gonna slowly ramp up. You guys know how I do with tail draggers. I'm already scared. We haven't even gotten moving yet. Yo! Easy. 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 Hi. Hi, Mamma Mia. Come on. <gasps> Oof. Okay. So I probably should have put in a bit more right rudder there to compensate. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby, I love the way. Holy crap. All right, let's come back to uh, about 2,500 RPMs. Let's pull that RPM back. There we go. Okay, see if we can just get her stabilized here. Got our trim going. Mercy. Okay. Yeah, the globe. Okay, I'll, I'll stop mentioning the canopy, but yeah, I'm really not crazy about that. All right, but so for just cruising around, it is very sensitive on the controls. You want to just barely touch it. And it's very much so like a fly-by-wire aircraft. Wherever you leave it, where it stays um, in the aspect of the flight stick not the necessary the attitude of the aircraft but I mean like kick it over my hands are now off the controls so it's just bang <laughs> but I cannot stress it enough you barely touch them okay that is very interesting all right so now let's see some of this low battery Why do we have a low battery? How do you have a low battery? It even says 5% up there. That even makes sense. How do we have a low battery on the pad? I have everything turned on, right? Switches on, batteries on. I don't know how we can have a low battery. Okay, so now let's check out some smoke. And let's start heading back towards airfield <laughs> holy crap holy crap ok 
goodness gracious. It wants to turn. My goodness, it wants to turn. Is that our airfield? I sort of lost track of where we are, I'm not going to lie. You guys should see this. Our field is. This is just insane. Like I said, it wants. I am barely, barely, barely touching the controls. This thing wants to grip and rip. That is for darn sure. Alrighty then. So let's uh, let's see how this goes here. And let's see here. So smoke is on. We have confirmation of such. Yep. All right. Whoa. <laughs> Let's not start the show too soon. Back to 2,500. Let's increase our RPMs. Dun, 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 dun. So first we'll do uh, just a few, uh, you know, of, of the overkill special. Okay. How do you charge this thing? I don't even understand. Start charging. Oh. I'll be dang. Okay, that was kind of cute. You actually have to plug it in. That's kind of funny. All right. Here we go. Mercy. Holy cow. Oof. Okay. Well, this is going to be special. Uh, let's see. Alright, something that I've always loved, and let's just see if I can even do one, is a knife edge. I don't know if I can or not, but I'm going to try it. Alright, so we're going to do a slight pull, roll, left rudder, hold it, and nope, I can't do it. <laughs> Alright, let's try something even more ridiculous. Okay, so up and roll. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, no, 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 no. Whoa! Oh! Wow! Okay. Um, it turns. Definitely turns. Definitely turns. Okay. Bring it around. Oh my goodness gracious. Yowza! Okay, so those little itty bitty wings just take your lift right out of it when you try to be uh, a hot shot. Definitely got to watch that bank angle, and we are still falling like crazy. That's probably the G-load on it right now. Whew. Okay. And let's try this from up over top. Betsy. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, so an acrobatic pilot, I am not. But. <laughs> Holy. Oh, too low. Too low. Too low. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Defense Department regrets to inform you that your sons are dead because they were stupid. <laughs> that was all my fault. 100% bad piloting. All right, so now that I'm done making a fool of myself and uh, flying like a complete uh, you-know-what, uh, let's go ahead and see what it takes to land this aircraft. And we've already got her slowed down quite a bit. I will say, guys, right out of the gate, I'm having a great time with this aircraft. This thing is fun. You have the best of both worlds. 
Um, I want to make it very, very clear that the flight model in this thing, the flight characteristics are absolutely a roller coaster. It's a rocket. It's a Lamborghini uh, with a Gen engine on it. Um, it's it's very, very unforgiving if you do something dumb as you just saw me do. Like I said, I absolutely earned that. So, uh, you know, uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. So, uh, if anything, that just further enhances the quality of the aircraft itself given the fact that it did you know i did something it didn't want me to do i did it at very low altitude and i paid the price for it so it didn't just let me do whatever i want uh it shows uh shows some risk and uh once again further keeps you on your toes so now we're going to try to land it we're looking for our approach speed of about 80 knots uh prop is supposed to rpm is supposed to remain above 2000 rpms now as far as i can tell we don't have any speed brakes we don't have any flaps so it's just going to be all about pulling enough power off to uh to get the aircraft to slow down. Oh, and that actually happens pretty quick. She does dump power pretty fast. So I'm gonna get that mixture back to full rich. The prop is back to full. And we're riding the line. We're just at uh, just about 90 knots, coming down to 80 right now. Approach speed's supposed to be 80 knots. So we're gonna be looking for that for a three point approach. Start trimming up. Gosh darn, man. You guys know I am terrified of landing tail draggers. I never do very well with them, so I always make my approaches quite a bit more shallow when it comes to a tail dragger. You don't normally see the uh, the overkill space shuttle approach when I'm using the tail draggers, but we'll see how today goes. All right, easy, easy on the controls. And I've noticed at the slower speeds, the wings really get loose. Really get loose. All right, pulling that power off. Pulling power off. Come on, baby. Float out. Float out. Float out. Easy. Ooh. Ooh. I think I got both wheels down. We got both wheels down. Hold. Hold. Holding the elevators back. Holding the elevator. I. No, come on. We actually had a good landing. Don't ruin it. And it was a good landing for me, guys. I, I can't stress that enough. No, was it a good landing? No. Was it a landing you'd ever want to brag to your friends about? Absolutely not. Is it a great landing for me on a tail dragger? Yes. <laughs> so, we're just going to have to accept that. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring us to a stop. And there we go. Whew. Goodness gracious. Oh, let's get back to our aircraft. There she is. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. All right, guys. Well, I can't stress it enough how awesome this aircraft is. It really is a ton of fun to fly, and the price range is right where it needs to be. The EFB has a ton of really cool features on it. I love the fact it's got the moving map. One of the things I forgot to test out was the ability to lock in the position of the aircraft uh, and set that position. But uh, you can set the longitude and latitude coordinates of the aircraft, its altitude, and its speed. Um, so that is a very handy feature if you want to be at a specific point, you're doing your aerobatics, maybe creating a starting point. There's all kinds of different neat ways that I could see that being applied. Um, I love the checklist. The checklist is very detailed and perfect for an aircraft. The way it's all laid out, I even love the fact that you had to plug in the uh, EFB in order to charge it. That was actually kind of a, a nice little surprise there. I didn't understand what was going on there. It caught me by surprise, but that was very, very cool. Uh, the aircraft is a beast. If you are someone who really does enjoy the high-performing aircraft, much like the GBR3 from Got Friends, this is another very, very great competitor. I can see the GBR3 and this one going head-to-head -head at an air race, and I'd love to see who came out on top. Uh, the turn rate, I think, is the fastest of any of the aircraft that I have flown yet. That turn rate is insane, um, and that's not a bad thing. It, it, I'm like, there's a lot of things that I could see us doing with this. In the next video, which we will be doing another one, we are going to take this thing over to Reno and check out some of the air race tracks and see how it performs. I think that would be a lot of fun. And obviously, you can tell it is definitely an air racer. You can see our even even got the tail numbers there on the back end. Um, so I would love to see how it actually holds up in the air race. And keep in mind, I'm not even a pro at it. I'm terrible at it. So um, the fact that I'm wanting to get out there and do it, you know, I, I can't stress it enough. Um, live to air. I think that the, you've done a wonderful job with this aircraft. My only gripe about this plane, again, is the canopy. I would like to see the canopy cleaned up to where you can get some better visibility out of it. However, I want to stress, if that is authentic to the aircraft, if that is something that is true to how it's supposed to be, then by all means tell me to be quiet. Um, I have no problem uh, swallowing my own words when I don't know what I'm talking about. 
Let me know what you guys think of this aircraft, especially if you decide to purchase it. Again, link to it will be down in the description below. 1655 euros, perfectly priced for an aircraft of this nature. I think it's a hell of a deal, and I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity to give you guys my first impressions on this particular plane. It was a ton of fun to fly. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.